Hey, now that January is over, uh, I've had time to crunch all my numbers from my first year blogging and I wanted to share with you everything that I spent as a brand new blogger in my first year. Okay, so when I sat down to crunch these numbers, I thought that I might be surprised that maybe I had spent a lot more than I thought, but really, the one of the big draws of a blogging business is the very low cost. And I will throw up a graphic here that is going to show what my expenses are, but I just wanna talk through them and tell you what I spent this first year. The first thing, of course, was my domain. My domain was $12. Uh, and then I bought hosting. Uh, I bought a Bluehost hosting package, the cheap one, it was $79. And then I bought my first course. <laughs> um, we've talked about this a little bit um, on this channel. I do think a course is a good idea. Uh, I don't think the way I did it initially was great. So there's someone that I really love who's a blogger and I got into, you know, a lot of <laughs> free webinars where they're trying to sell you their courses. And in this one, they sent me an offer for a product, uh, course like to make a product uh, it was $17 I bought it and as soon as I started it I realized it was over my head so that was kind of a wasted a wasted $17 after that I really talked to my husband I spent $450 on project 24 this was not a wasted purchase and um, I had been listening to a lot of Ruth Sukat before that and she talks about how if something's more expensive it has more value to the person who's buying it and I do think that was the case with Project 24. $450 was a lot of money to put out so I was really committed. The other thing is they had had me hooked on their YouTube channel for probably six months before I started so I really did know what I wanted and I knew that when I pulled the trigger that I would be committed and I have been. So then I bought another domain for $12. Then I bought another small product that was the lore of something new and exciting. Um, I hang around Amelia Gardner's channel quite a bit. And one thing she talks about is just doing the boring work. And I started to get really restless in the last couple months because it's just a lot of the same. And I'm not making a lot of money right now. So I bought another product. It was a $9 ebook that just seemed more exciting than what I was doing. And it was a good read and I, I don't regret purchasing it, but it was an escapist thing. If you find yourself buying a lot of courses like I did, um, people will tell you, but I'm gonna tell you too, like stick with what you have, get all the way through it before you try to buy something else. People have told me again and again to wait until my website is making $1,000 a month before I try something else. And I think that I'm going to see the sense in that advice more and more as time goes on. When we bought the second domain and we decided to launch a second website, we had to increase our hosting package. So that cost $200. That's three years of hosting. I actually just heard Anthony from Tortoise Cashflow um, say that he was on the same plan. I know um, I, even myself, thought that doing hosting with Bluehost was a bad idea when I did it, but I have really not had any issues. I think it's been a great place for me to start. I did end up having to pay my domain renewal and that included some protections and things so that cost $34. I spent $100 on keywords. I bought a keyword list from a keyword service and again I think this was a an attempt to escape the hard work that I just needed to be doing. Um, I'm sure the keywords are great and I'm sure the posts are going to rank well but when I got it, it wasn't the magic I hoped it would be. It didn't, I didn't learn from the process. I hear a lot of people saying that. They're like, I'm gonna buy a keyword package because I'm gonna learn so much from seeing the keywords that someone who knows what they're doing chooses. Um, I think, I, I don't regret the, per, the purchase because $100 is not a lot of money to put out there. Um, when I, I think I'll earn the money back with the posts, but I just think that it was another unnecessary spend because I was just trying to escape. I also spent about $80 on Keyword Chef. Uh, that has, or maybe $40. I've spent about $40 on Keyword Chef. That I think has been a really good tool. I think it's a good tool for beginners. I'm glad that I waited about six or seven months before I tried a tool and did manual search um, analysis or keyword research. Um, but Keyword Chef has been helpful. The thing that I noticed with Keyword Chef though is that 
when I look at those keywords, I see a lot of other bloggers, small websites, affiliate marketers in the SERPs. So I know that everyone else is using the tools. And I just watched Morton's video about how keyword research is getting harder. And I, I think he's exactly right. You have to be creative and using a low cost tool like Keyword Chef is helpful, but I don't think you're gonna find a lot of hidden treasure unless you're using very creative seed words, um, exactly what Morton was saying in his video. So that total was $960. So in my first year blogging, even with some unnecessary, even maybe lavish purchases, I spent $920. There's one other cost that I want to mention here, and that is content. Content is the largest cost for this business if you choose to outsource for content. For our second website, I had mentioned in a previous video, we hired a friend of ours to write some content. It cost, we have spent $600 in 2021 on content. So that brings the total that we spent to $1,560. That's how much blogging cost me in my first year. I'm gonna do a, the next video where I'm gonna talk about how much I made in my first year and we can see what my total profit or loss is for the year. Thanks so much. I know that we're all killing it in 2022.